This is a recording of the audio. Hello, AP Calc AB students, and welcome back. Mr. Record here from Avon High School and our beginnings of our video series for topic 1.15 in the College Board course and exam description. Just a couple of more topics to go before we wrap up unit one. And in topic 115, we're gonna to continue to talk about limits using the idea of infinity but now we're going to connect it to a totally different kind of asymptote, and this will be the horizontal asymptote. If you've taken a look at the videos from topic 1.14, those were all about vertical asymptotes and how they relate to calculus. Now we're going to talk about those other asymptotes. So the best way to get started is probably to look at the notes here from my course. I'm going to move my camera down just a little bit out of the way here. And let's kind of look at this opening activity. It says, consider the following function. Okay, I've considered it, all right? And it does ask that you graph it on your TI calculator or whatever kind of calculator that you want to use. Now, I'm not gonna worry so much about what the graph looks like. Um, I wanna take a look a bit better look at this table of values that we could very easily generate on our own. I've I've talked to you guys about many different ways that you can generate a table of values on the various models of the uh, Texas Instrument line of calculators, at least. Um, and of course, you can also do this with certain graphing software like Desmos for, for just to name one. But if you were to set up a table and you set this table up in such a way that you would plug numbers kind of like in the multiples of, of like, oh, base 10, let's say. So you've got like, you know, zero to start with, and then you've got like 10 to the zero power, 10 to the first, 10 to the second. We could go out to 10 to the third, 10 to the fourth, but I wanted to kind of let you realize that as we were going to do that, if you take a good look at the output here, and this is reliable output that comes from this function, what is it that you see the f of x values approaching as our x values get larger and larger. And for that matter, take a look at the other side. As the x values get smaller and smaller, tending towards negative infinity, what does it seem like the y values become? And I want you to know that if you were to tackle this particular type of, of problem um, on your own, that you would not have the benefit of these two columns, right? We're not really going to be able to plug in infinity in the traditional sense. So by looking at these values alone, we should be confident that our ends are approaching three. That's what we call end behavior from, say, pre-calculus. And so that's exactly how we'll answer that question. As x grows large, f of x will approach three, and as x grows really small, f of x will also approach the 3. Now it says, therefore, what is it that you can say that focus on limit statements? Well, this x approach business is just really another way that you can manipulate x and a limit. You can actually have x approach infinity. And it's possible you have seen this in your course. I know certainly my students have been exposed to it a little bit, but we are now going to make a formal big deal about it. And we can say that that limit does indeed equate to three. And likewise, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of our function f of x will also approach three. So what the heck does all this mean, you might ask? Well. It's our idea of the limits at infinity. And so if we read over there now, it says that the concept of limits as x approaches infinity really means the following. What happens to y as x gets really, really large? And so we're interested in what's happening to the y values as the curve gets farther and farther to the right. right? Likewise, we can say the same thing about x approaching negative infinity. And so the terminology that we're going to use are these two pieces of information in the limits. Now note that it does not make any sense. It's kind of silly. You never really say that you can approach infinity from the right 
or approach negative infinity from the left. That's a little crazy, okay? So we can only approach infinity or negative infinity in one way possible, okay? Now, if we were to take a look at our graph from our calculator, I'll show you what it looks like here. Here's our good friend, right, from uh, the TI Inspire graphing calculator, the software at least. And you can see as X is growing larger and larger to the right, we are certainly approaching the, the idea of a, of a positive three. But way over there on the other side, as X is approaching negative infinity more and more and more, the Y value is also approaching that three. I don't think you need to be reminded what is really happening at this horizontal line y equal three. For example, if I were just to take a moment and maybe sketch another quick little graph, how about y equal three? Oops, I don't need to put the y equal in there, of course. F2 of x is equal to three. What do I have? Well, it looks like I got two equal signs. That's what I've got. We got to fix that. We graph that, and yes, we are going to have a horizontal asymptote. And that is hopefully the connection that we're going to make here. Let's return to the notes. And here we go. We've got a, a few examples, five in total, each with two parts that are going to depict five different graphs. And we're going to focus on the idea of our x approaching a very unbounded number. And so if we take a look here at the example one, for each graph of f of x, find the given limits. So in part a, limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x. Well, if we drive along our function road and we let the x get smaller and smaller towards negative infinity, but again, stay on the road, we find that our y values are going to go up and up and up and up, and therefore they're going to approach positive infinity. We do the same thing over on the right side, let x approach positive infinity, we find that we still get an, a y value that's going to approach positive infinity. Now we're gonna make a connection later about what does that say about horizontal asymptotes? So hold on for that for just a moment. You could say that neither of those two limits exist because they don't equate to a actual numerical value, but I'm really happy if we just leave it as infinity for right now because that kind of says a little bit more about the behavior of the graph. All right, I'd like you guys to do example two. Take a couple of seconds. I think it's a couple of seconds, right? If x approaches negative infinity, our f of x is going to approach positive. Meanwhile, over here, if we let x approach positive infinity, our f of x is going to approach negative infinity. So hopefully, hopefully this is starting to make a little bit of sense to you. We're going to move on and hit our next three examples here. Now in example four, we have a slightly different looking graph. Got a little guidelines there to help you. I want you to just take a moment, pause the video if you need to, and answer question three, part A and part B. Hopefully that's given you enough time. If not, like I said, pause that video. Let's let X approach negative infinity and find out what's the Y values doing. Well, they're going up and up and up and up and up, but not to a point that we could say they're going to be growing unbounded. In fact, we seem to have this little bit of a ceiling here at Y equal four that's gonna serve as that upper bound. And that, my friends, is going to be the answer to the limit. Let's do the same thing as x approaches positive infinity. We're moving along this part of our road. The y values are getting a little smaller, teeny bit smaller, and they seem to converge upon this value here at negative 2. And now maybe the idea of the horizontal asymptote is starting to take over even more. Take a look at example 4. Pause the video if you need to do so. All right, very unusual behaving graph here in example four. But again, we should be able to kind of pinpoint on a limit. As X approaches negative infinity, we're moving around this seemingly oscillating curve. 
but we focus or sort of converge upon this horizontal line here of x equal 1. Now, sometimes I'll have people say, wait, Mr. Record, did you not say that limits of oscillating functions will fail to exist? Well, I didn't say that exactly, but I said limits of functions that oscillate between two fixed values will fail to exist. Notice we do not have an oscillation between fixed values of y. They sort of narrow down as, as the graph keeps moving to the left. And so that's a very different situation. And I think we could say the same thing on the right side here. If x approaches positive infinity, like a vine growing around like a fence post, a horizontal fence post, we're going to get this limit of 0. And the thing that's absolutely mind-boggling about a function like this is that students will tend to think that, oh, well, there can't be horizontal asymptotes here because those horizontal asymptotes are being crossed. There's no rule that ever says that a horizontal asymptote cannot be intersected by some part of the graph. And so we have to kind of uh, suspend that disbelief, so to speak, about horizontal asymptotes, especially the way that you've likely seen them in previous courses. Last problem, and then we'll call it a day. How about that? Example five, two more very similar kinds of limits approaching negative infinity and infinity. Pause the video if you need to and see if you can answer these. I'm hoping that you had time to look at them. If not, pause the video. I mean it. Pause the video this time. Make sure you look at these. All right. Let's take a look. As x approaches negative infinity, what we have going on here is the graph is indeed oscillating. We know that. And it's now kind of doing that oscillating between two fixed values. Remember, I tried to plant that in your head with the previous problem. And so we do have a situation where the limit will fail to exist. And I'm fine if we want to write does not exist for this particular problem. Now for part B, we have oscillation as x gets bigger and bigger, but it seems like the y values are still continuing to grow a little bit higher each time. And I guess if we continued this, the hilltops are, 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 are sort of smaller from a relative standpoint, but they still tend to be growing. And I know that's a little bit tough because you got to really trust the overall sort of pattern here that's being developed. Because of that, we're going to go ahead and say that this limit is going to equate to infinity. It's not going to exist, but we have a, a much better reasoning for it in that it does seem to grow unbounded. Uh, the QR code over, whoops, over here, there it is. Uh, I, I'm going to leave that here with this particular video. It's probably not going to appear on my notes much longer because I do have a few other problems that are somewhat similar to these that if you wanted to take a look at. But if you understand these five, you've got a pretty good grasp of what's going on with the idea of how the limit as x approaches an unbounded value, infinity or negative infinity, uh, produces an answer. Stick around for the next few videos in this series, and we'll talk more about horizontal asymptotes and how they connect to calculus. We'll see you next time.